Okay, our study on the Ten Commandments. Today, the Second Commandment. Images and idols. Exodus 20, verse 4 through 6. Thou shalt not, thou shalt not, thou shalt not. That easy, understandable English. Don't do it. Thou shalt not make unto thee any graven image, an image that you purposely make, fashion, tools, molds, or any likeness of anything that is in heaven above, angels, moons, stars, planets, and that is in the earth beneath, worms, snakes, or that is in the waters under the earth, uh, the Christian fish symbol, Whales, mermaids. Thou shalt not, you got it, thou shalt not. What does that mean? Thou shalt not. Bow down thyself to them. You know, like when you go water a Christmas tree and gather the gifts under the Christmas tree, you're bowing down. When you're cleaning Mary in her little half shell, you'll make sure she's clean. Nor serve them. Take care of them, help them. Clean them. Talk to them. For I, God, the Lord thy God, am a jealous God. Visiting the iniquity of the fathers upon the children unto the third and fourth generation. Why the third and fourth generation? Grandma, my parents, me, and my grandchildren, and my children are going to stay in the same religion because this is our family religion. And we're going to bring up our children, our grandchildren, our great-great-children unto the mother church. Unless someone comes in with the gospel and preaches to them the truth about the Bible. And not tradition. I thank God that I've seen the generation of my grandfather, the generation of myself, my aunt, and my mom break into the tradition of mother church. For the salvation of the Lord Jesus Christ alone. Of them that hate me. How do you know that Catholics hate God? By doing what they do. And having an excuse of AIDS to worship. And taking out the second commandment. As does the Lutherans. And when you get a Catholic or a Lutheran. Ten Commandment plaque, there is no Second Commandment. And I'll tell you how also a Catholic, by experience, will show their hatred to God. Show them the Gospel. Tell them what the Bible says. You're mean. It's the church. How dare you? You ought to be tortured. You ought to be killed. You ought to be burned. You ought to hang. Inquisition. It is one church that persecuted Bible believers. It is one church that you can't open the Bible. Don't open it. And showing mercy unto the thousands of them that love me, as he's done for me and some of my family, and keep my commandments. Okay, so that's the second commandment. Thou shalt not have any other gods and idols and images and that's not found in the Catholic and Lutheran catechism I read to you a few, di few days ago, or weeks. But we call it AIDS to worship. And AIDS will kill you. It's a disease. As AIDS is a disease of the sodomites, AIDS to worship is a disease of the Catholics and religion. It will kill you. And the Bible speaks many, many times. We can't get into it. If we were to speak about all the times of images on idolatry in the Bible, we would have to do a daily lesson. And I would, I would suppose about 31 days it would take to do that lesson. Anywhere between 30 to 45 minute lesson. You're in the realms of, of Jezebel. You're in the realm of all the, the northern... Israel tried with their golden calves that may like chicken. Listen. 
An idol image is a is a noun, person, place, or thing. Do you have an image or a carving or a or a something that is of a man? Is a person, is a place or thing? And do you honor? It? Do you have those pictures of that vacation, you that city you want to go to, and all the imagery of that city? You have idolatry. You got your favorite posters, your favorite actors, and their, and their pictures, and they're posted on all your walls and stuff like that, and on your desk. That's that's idolatry. Thing. I mean, do you have little stuffed animals that you hope will give you money, and and, and little toy trucks that will hope you give you money in the future? That's idolatry. Do you lift up your pastor above God? That's idolatry. Do you have a better hope than seeing Jesus? That's idolatry. Do you read something more than the Bible? That's idolatry. So I'm going to go back to the Catholic. I'm going to go back to all what it is. Leviticus 19.4. Leviticus 19.4. There's plenty of idolatries out there. Whatever you put ahead of God. Remember the first commandment? God first. And if God is not first, you got idolatry. So you violated the first commandment with idolatry. And you violated the second commandment by having idolatry. Idolatry makes you sin against the first commandment. Leviticus 19.4 Turn ye not unto idols, nor make to the yourselves boating gods. I am the Lord your God. You know, statues of, of marble and stone and concrete and wood and plastic are all fashion. And they're worship. And you'll open up your wallet and you will pay for them instead of open up your wallet for the Lord. Idolatry. You can make your own idolatry. Or you buy idolatry. Chapter 26, verse 1. Ye shall make you no idols or graven images, neither rear, that means bring up, raise up, you a standing image. You mean Mary standing up in the church, standing up in your front yard? You mean all the images and idolatry that shows up in graveyards? On your fireplace? On your car dashboard? On your desk at work? Ye rear up a standing image, neither shall ye set up any image of stone in your land, Jewish land, to bow down unto it, for I am the Lord your God. So you can't have a standing image. I grew up, I'm going to say roughly nine to ten years in the Catholic Church. There were a lot of standing images, which the Bible says, not. No. The church said, tradition says, don't read your Bible. Trust us. Because if you read your Bible, you'll find out that we're complete liars. We've lied to you. And don't trust us with your children. Stop saying that. 2630. Well, anybody can get involved with, with such a organization that is so wicked and vile. 2630. And I, God, will destroy your high places. Lofty places. And cut down your images. God will do it. And cast your carcasses, your dead bodies, upon the carcasses of your idols. And my soul, God's soul, shall abhor you. I hate you. God will get the chainsaw down. God will get the sledgehammer. And he'll break it down in his anger because he's jealous. You know, the law prevents me, and I wouldn't want to do it, to go into a church and tear down the idols and images. God will do it one day. And when God came into Israel through the Assyrians, and when God came into Jerusalem and Judah by the Babylonians, he ripped all that stuff down. Tore it all down. 
He'll do it again. Definitely at the second advent, all those idols, images, and all, they're going to be trash canned by God. The Bible says that they're going to throw them into the holes of the bowls and into the, the caves. And, uh, there comes the real God. Don't let me get caught. Deuteronomy 29, 17. Deuteronomy 29, 17. You know, they're dumb and dead and stupid. They don't answer you. Deuteronomy 29, 17. Over in the Orient, I heard from a missionary. Said, this woman received Christ as her Savior, but she kept her dollies. Dollies are important over there. And he explained to her, he said, listen, Jesus Christ arose from the grave. And she's like, well, my, my statue, my, they got, they they got life. He says, oh yeah? He says, can I take one? I want to do something for it. Yeah, sure, what are you going to do? Went out in the backyard, dug a hole. And buried one of them dollies in the hole. He said, I'll be back in three days or three nights. And he came back after three days and three nights. He said, Jesus Christ arose from the grave three days and three nights. He goes, yeah, you believe that? Yes. What I'm saying. He's not in the tomb. No, no, he said he's not here. He's risen. He dug up that hole and that dolly was there. And that woman and that, that missionary spent the afternoon breaking them in pieces. Let's see your dollies give you comfort when you need it. Let's go check the junkyards for St. Christopher and see how well he protected the patriot saints of the automobile and drivers. That he was, he did such a terrible job that the Catholic Church fired him. Because he would be found in the junkyards. As you will find the popes in the graveyard, dead. Which you stop doing that. Chapter 29, verse 17. And ye have seen their abomination. Catholic word would be anathema. And their idols. Wood. Stone. Silver. And gold. There you go. And it's out of the land of Egypt. Verse 16. Listen, those Catholic gods and, and images and ideas. All they are other gods with different names. Aliases. Mary, all she is is that star. You go looking out for her eggs every spring. Too bad you guys don't know what I'm talking about. 1 Samuel 15. 1 Samuel 15. We are talking about a serious sin here that the Bible, the Holy Spirit, that God broke with his finger and said, when you're involved with this sin, you hate me. And many of them that we dealt with, and you asked my family, many Catholics hate us when we have the biblical truth. Verse 15. Verse 23. For rebellion, rebellion, that's going against God, going against authority, going against the government, going against the law. The Southerners call themselves the rebellious, the rebellion of the United States. And they have a rebel flag. I didn't say it, you say it, not me, it's telling you. For rebellion is as the sin of witchcraft. Witchcraft and rebellion are a sin and they are equal to each other. Oh, no, can't have Harry Potter, but I can have my rebel flag. <laughs> You're the same. It's a sin. There's no degrees of sin. All have sin. To him that knows to do it good and do it not, to him it is sin. If you now have heard that idolatry is a sin and you commit idolatry, you have sinned. You are without excuse. If you don't do what God in the Bible tells you to do, your rebellion, that's just as much as witchcraft. And stubbornness, not moving, not doing, putting off as iniquity and idolatry. 
idolatry in the Bible, according to the Holy Spirit, is just as bad as being stubborn. Why? I'm not giving it up. My church says so. I like it. It's age to worship. It's iniquity. It's abomination. You hate God. I am not telling you what my words are. I'm telling you what the Bible says. You may be clenching your fists and cursing me down and making a voodoo doll, which is idolatry, and sticking pins in it, calling it styly, but God's up in heaven saying, I love them feet that preach the gospel. Voodoo dolls are an image of somebody else. That's idolatry. How'd you get off into that? God only knows. Romans 13, 9. Woohoo! Let's go to the New Testament. Let's go to the church age. You, you been, you've been in the Old Testament. Okay, Romans 13, verse 9. For this, thou shalt not commit adultery, thou shalt not kill, thou shalt not steal, thou shalt not bear false witness. All these we're going to look at soon. Thou shalt not covet. If there be any other commandment, it is briefly comprehended, and this saying, namely, thou shalt love thy neighbor as thyself. Those are the commandments. Love worketh no ill to his neighbor, therefore love is the fulfilling of the law. Thou shalt not. Thou shalt not. We're going to look at more verses. You say, well, that was missing. We'll come back. Exodus 20, verse 5 again. We'll come back. We'll see what Paul has to say. Just wanted to show you the commandments. Exodus 20, verse 5. Thou shalt not. Thou shalt not. Thou shalt not. Write it a hundred times, will you? Thou shalt not. Bow down thyself to them, nor serve them. For I, the Lord, and for I, the Lord thy God, am a jealous God, visiting the iniquity. Didn't we just see that in Samuel? Iniquity is equal to idolatry. Okay? Deuteronomy 5 9. Deuteronomy 5 9. Thou shalt not bow down thyself unto them, nor serve them. For I, the Lord thy God, am a jealous God, visiting iniquity again. At the end of the verse, then they hate me. Iniquity and hating God is attached to idolatry. How can you call an aid of worship? Oh yeah, aid of worship of Satan and his religion. Not of God. 16.22, Deuteronomy 16.22. I'm just looking at the scriptures. I am reading the scriptures and making as few word notes I am. I'm letting the scriptures talk. So go ahead and blast me all you want. It's the scriptures. Deuteronomy 16, 22. Neither shalt thou set thee up an image which the Lord thy God hateth. You hate God and God hates idolatry. Have you got it more simple than that? I love God. You got idolatry? Yeah, you're a liar. False witness. Oh, there's another commandment you violated. And God hates your idolatry. Bible. Bible. You heard it. Neither shall thou set up any image which the Lord thy God hateth. Hate. Hate. Oh, we don't have to have hate speech. God says, I hate it. I hate it. Acts 15. Acts chapter 15. New Testament. On this side of Calvary. Acts 15, 20. But that we write unto them, Gentiles that are saved, that they abstain from pollution of idols. Fornication, things strangled, and from blood, 
Oh, the straws! The straws are polluting the ocean! The plastic bags are going to kill us! Oh, the smog from automobiles! Oh, the pollution! The council in the book of Acts says that Jerusalem, pollution of idols. God hates it. You hate God. It's called iniquity. It's called uh, 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 stubbornness. And it's called pollution. Save your soul. Believe on the Lord Jesus Christ and get rid of those sins. Get rid of the iniquity. Stop being stubborn. Twenty-nine, verse twenty-nine. He is saying, "For the meats offered to idols, fish on Friday. Oh, this bread is Jesus. This wine is His blood. Holy, holy, full of baloney, hocus pocus, witchcraft. It is witchcraft to take a piece of a wafer and turn it into a body. That's witchcraft. That's rebellion." God hates it, and God hates you for doing it. Idolatry. How's that? And fornication and sins. Sins. It is a sin for a Gentile to be involved with idolatry on this side of Calvary. Romans 2.22 Romans 2.22. You are all ability and able to give this video out to your Catholic friends. Go for it. Send it out. Mail it out. Email it out. Cut. Paste. Copy. Whatever you can do to get the word out, do it. And if you splice and cut and make me say things that I didn't say, that's between you and God. God knows what I'm teaching. This is not copyrighted. 2.22. Thou sayest a man should not commit adultery, does thou commit adultery? Thou that abhorrest idols, does thou commit sacrilege? Paul says sacrilege is idolatry. Idolatry. I think it's sacrilege was one of those holy Catholic words. First Corinthians five ten. First Corinthians five ten. I love the Bible. I love preaching. First Corinthians five ten. Yet not altogether with the fornications of this world, or the covetous or extortioners, or with idolaters. This read verse nine. I wrote unto you in epistle not to keep company with fornicators or idolaters. Christian, the Bible says you are not supposed to be with idolaters. That's your Catholic family. They are idolatry. I don't care what their church teaches. I don't care what the tradition teaches. I care what the Bible teaches. You witness to them. You pray for them. But you do not have fellowship with idolaters. I won't go to their weddings and I won't go to their funerals. I will not set a, a, a foot in their church. Something might get on me. Verse 11. But now I write unto you not to keep company. If any man that is called a brother, say Christian, be a fornicator or covetous or an idolater, there it is, or railer or a drunkard or an ex extortioner, with such and one know not to eat. Paul writes to the Corinthians, if they are involved in idolatry, whatever they are, if they have idolatry, do not keep their company and do not sit down. How's that? Verse 12. How's that? If you hear that, it's a stupid computer. How's that? What does Paul say about idolatry? Not to keep company with them. So if he says don't keep company with them, don't eat with them, would you think he says to the Christian, don't do it? 
thou shalt not. But you'll look for a loophole. Chapter 6, verse 9. Know ye not that the unrighteous shall not inherit the kingdom of God? Be not deceived, neither fornicators, nor idolaters, nor adulterers. Well, look at the commandments. Nor effeminate. Men who don't know how to be men. That's today. Nor abusers of themselves with mankind, nor thieves, nor covetous. Ten commandments. Nor drunkards, nor revilers, nor extortioners shall inherit the kingdom of God. Without the blood atonement of the, of the gospel of the Lord Jesus Christ, Catholics do, and Lutherans and those that have idolatry do not go into heaven. Now, if they are saved, they will have a great loss of wood, hay, or stubble as ashes. I would think that both Testaments, old and new, that God would say, No, or thou shall not. <coughs> when it comes to idolatry. Chapter 10, verse 7. Chapter 10, verse 7. Need it be the idolaters. There it is. As it's written, the people sat down to eat, drink, and rose up to play. That's Aaron making golden calf. That would rather have chicken. They played. They ate. They drank. No company with them that do it. Stay away from those that worship the calf. The cows. The bee. Be careful. Stay away. It's idolatry. Verse 14. Wherefore, my dearly beloved, flee from idolatry. Is it not clear? Is it not clear what Paul says, what God says? Galatians 5.20. Galatians 5.20. I'm reading from a King James Bible, am I not? Idolatry, witchcraft, uh-oh, 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 that was in Samuel. Chapter 15, idolatry, witchcraft, hatred, Ooh. variance, immolation, wrath, strife, sedition, heresies. Verse 19, now the works of the flesh are manifest, which are these? Verse 19, 20, 21. We're looking at idolatry. Idolatry is a sin of the flesh. Look at verse 16. I say, walk in the spirit and you shall not fulfill the lust of the flesh. Those who have idolatry are not walking in the Holy Spirit. They're walking in the flesh and sin and idolatry and, and iniquity and rebellion and sin and hatred. Ephesians 5.5 5. Ephesians 5.5 5. We've already seen you violated the first commandment by violating the second commandment. 5.5 5. For this ye know, you're supposed to know this, that no whoremonger, nor unclean person, nor covetous man, that's the Ten Commandments, who is an idolater, has inheritance in the kingdom of Christ and of God. A Christian that has idolatry is saved, does not lose his salvation, but he loses the right of the inheritance in the millennial kingdom. You don't lose your salvation, you lose rewards, you lose inheritance. An unsaved man with idolatry goes to hell. A saved man with idolatry does not gain a reward. Are we not being simple here? We not being plain Colossians 3 5. We're on this side of Calvary in the Bible. Jesus Christ has suffered. He's died. He's buried. He's at the right hand of the Father. Paul is called out to the Gentiles. Colossians 3 5. Mortified, dead. Mortician deals with dead people. Mortified. Therefore, your members which are upon the earth, fornications, uncleanness, look at the Ten Commandments, 
inordinate affection, evil concupiscence, and covetousness, which is idolatry. Oh, so the Catholics and the Lutherans do have it right. Idolatry is also associated with covetousness. So when you have idolatry, you've broken the first commandment, you've broken the second commandment, and you've broken the tenth commandment. Now the ten is one, not two. Thou shalt not cover thy neighbor's wife, thou shalt not cover thy neighbor's goods, thou shalt not cover anything thy neighbor's. Idolatry is coveting, and coveting is idolatry. You have broken three commandments, and we're only on the second commandment. And you hate God, and God hates your idolatry. And if you're saved and you got idolatry, you're coveting, and you lose reward. There is no blessings by having idols. And I'm not talking about this statues. I'm talking about anything that's a noun, person, place, or thing that you have put in your heart above God. Your hope, your glory, your blessfulness is that person, place, or thing, and not God. That's idolatry. Covetousness, idolatry. Oh, I love this baseball team. I can't wait to go to watch them. Oh, I love this thing. It, it's going to make me money. I can't wait for the day for it to give me more, more, more money. Oh, I love my job. I can't wait for my job to get me all the way up to the corporate ladder. Husbands, wives, children, aunts, uncles, grandparents can be your idols when you put them above God. First Thessalonians one nine. First Thessalonians one nine. For they themselves show of us what manner of entry in we had unto you. And how ye turn to God from idols and serve the living and true God. You know what repentance is? You put those idolaters, idolatry, you put those things that are made of wood, stubble, hay, whatever they're made of, whatever they please you instead of God. When you put them away, you turn to God. You don't keep them, Christian. You go wood, hay, or stubble, it turns to ashes at the judgment seat of Christ. Without Jesus Christ, without the saving hope, without the, the gospel of Jesus Christ and the, and the faith that you have put in and the repentance that you put in Christ, if you have not done that, you and your idols go to hell. Believe on the Lord Jesus Christ and thou shalt be saved. It doesn't say anything about believe on this statue, believe on this bead, Believe on this is cross. Believe on. Again, idolatry could be your church building. It could be your pastor. It could be your baptism certificate. It could be anything but God in Jesus Christ. It's an idol. It is wrong. Repent. Get right. First John 5, 21. You're just so excited. You better be. Uh, I'm excited. I love the word of God. 1 John 5, 21, little children, keep yourselves from idols. Amen. Did I get an amen out of that? Little children, keep yourself from idols. Amen. Come on, shout it out. Amen. Don't get your children involved in idols and imagery. Get them on Jesus. Jesus said, suffer the little children to come unto me. Don't bring your children to anything else but God, to Jesus, and the Bible. Anything else is idolatry, and you have failed as a parent. And you'll stand before God, saved or lost. Remember the third or fourth generation? I'm going to raise my children, I'm going to raise my grandchildren, I'm going to raise my great children. I'm going to raise them in this church of idolatry stuff. God hates when you bring your children up in idolatry. God hates the idolatry that you brought them up in. Ooh, you're preaching. I know I am. Revelation 2. Revelation. Oh, I love Revelation. <laughs> Revelation 2. 
14. But I have a few things against thee. Uh-oh, God doesn't like something. Because thou hast there them that hold the doctrine of Balaam, who taught Balak, to cast a stumbling block before the children of Israel, and to eat things sacrificed unto idols, and commit fornication. God, Jesus Christ, Jesus is speaking, hates the church doing idolatry. Oh, not done yet? Verse 20. 220. Never, notwithstanding, I have a few things against thee. I don't like what you're doing, something. Because thou suffers that woman Jezebel, which calleth herself a prophetess, to teach, to seduce my servants, save people, to commit fornication, to eat things sacrificed unto idols. This is two church age periods and God says, I got something against you. I got idolatry against you. And one of them is a great woman called Jezebel. You know, great mother church that says, hey, offer our sacrifices and we'll sacrifice them to idols, aids of worship, the golden cup. Revelation 9.20. Keep going. Oh, this, you're turning me off on the book of Revelation now. Revelation 9.20. The rest of the men which were not killed by these plagues, yet repented not of the works of their hands, that they should not worship devils and idols of gold and silver and brass and stone and of wood. There are men in tribulation period, they got their idolatry. They got their images, they got their idols, they got their aids of worship, and it's still iniquity, it's still rebellion, it is still sin, it's still against God. And God still hates it. And those that are doing it, hate God. How's that? 21a. Revelation 21a. The eternal life. We're in eternity now. 21a. All have been cast off in the lake of fire. All have been put into the new heavens, the new earth, or new Jerusalem. But the fearful, the unbelieving, and the abominable, and murderers, and whoremongers, and sorcerers, and idolaters, and all liars, there's their commandments, shall have their part in a lake which burneth with fire and brimstone. If you have not trusted, if you have not put your faith, if you have not repented of your sins to the Lamb of God, which take away the sin of the world, and you got idolatry, it will cast you into the lake of fire forever. Behold the Lamb of God, which take away the sin of the world. There's a sin that the Lamb can take away of. Believe on the Lord Jesus Christ and thou shalt be saved. Christ can wash you of idolatry. Christ can save you from imagery. You've got to believe and repent of them sins. 22.15 22.15 Eternal life. For without our dogs. No one can come into New Jerusalem. Dogs. Oh, Fluffy ain't going to heaven for without our dogs. Dogs don't go to heaven. And sorcerers and whoremongers and murderers. Look at the crowd these idolaters show up with. Sorcerers, murderers, and idolaters. And whosoever loveth and maketh a lie. Have you noticed what idolatry, the context, and the sins that we've read through? Not a very good group of people. This is not the group of people that you would want your children to be hanging around in life and to grow and learn, and yet you do have your children hanging around with you. Called the public school system. It's called clubs. It's called hangouts. It's called the world. 
And it can be called a church. Colossians 3 5. Colossians 3 5. I wish you picked a different subject. Mortify, kill, put to death. Therefore, your members, which are upon the earth, fornication, uncleanness, inordinate reflection, evil complacence, and covetousness, which is idolatry. You gotta put away idolatry. You gotta put away covetousness. That's two commandments. Breaking the first commandment, not having God first. One commandment breaking, we have seen it break three. And back to 1 Samuel 15, 23. We were there before. We'll close right here. 1 Samuel 15, 23. We'll close here. For rebellion is the sin as witchcraft, and stubbornness as iniquity and idolatry. Let's leave it right there. I'm going to just make a couple of statements and I'm done. Iniquity. Iniquity is sin. It is never an aid to worship. You've been falsely taught. I've showed you Exodus 20. I've showed you Deuteronomy. And if you, church, if you check some of your church catechism, this commandment is missing. Now go ask the leader of your church why. We'll tell you tradition. Read the Bible. Study what we just told you on this lesson. It's iniquity. It is sin. 